Hello and welcome to St Matthew's Manly today. My name is Scott Petty, I'm one of the ministers from St Matthew's. It's the first of our live stream services and I'm delighted to be able to participate with you in fellowship wherever you are joining in from, in Manly and beyond. Of course, a special welcome to guests who might be joining us from other churches and other locations. We really do hope that you have an encouraging time with us today. Obviously, this is a first for us and I'm sure we won't get it all right today but I do want to thank the staff team for their hard work and the way they've pulled together to make today happen, uh, especially Nathan Campbell and Max Brewer on the tech front. Equally obviously, this situation has been thrust upon us rather than being a matter of our choosing, but instead of retreating in either fear or displeasure, we are choosing to make the most of this new opportunity. And that is a matter of our choosing. So let's make the most of being together in different ways of growing in our faith and understanding of the love of God and of reaching out to serve our neighbours with Christian love and gospel truth. So welcome to our service today. I'm going to let you know how the service is going to work. Today's service is going to be a one size fits all. That is, we'll be live streaming the same service at each of our four service times. And we do expect that as we get used to this new paradigm that we might have more bespoke features like set prayers at 8 a.m. or a kid spot at 10 a.m., for example. But everything has been streamlined for today. So in a moment, I'll open up our time in prayer and commit it to God, and then David will lead us in worship. And I do encourage you to join in singing wherever you might be. We'll have prayers and a Bible reading and a special message from Bruce that will focus on our response as Christian believers to the unfolding coronavirus situation. And we'll try to wrap everything up in around 45 or 50 minutes or so. Well, before we go any further, let me commit our time together to God in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, there is much on our minds at the moment but we ask that in our time together today, you would encourage our hearts to trust you rather than fear. You would speak to us through your scriptures in life-giving ways. You would find our prayers and our praise acceptable and lovely. You would move us to think also of our neighbours, and you would help us to love and encourage one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to worship God in song, and so I'll hand over to David now.
Rosary too In robes of white Their blazing sun Shall peace the night And now we rise Among the saints By Gestron's face On Jesus' face
My name's Kelsey. I'm one of the ministers here, and we are going to be praying. So wherever you are, just close your eyes and join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God of all creation, all-powerful and all-knowing, we come before you today in these unprecedented and uncertain times with humility, trust, and confidence in you alone. We know that you are more powerful than any natural force, any illness, or economic setback, and that nothing surprises you. We praise you, for you are our refuge and strength, our ever-present help in trouble. We praise you, and we know we need not fear, for you are with us. We pray now for our nation and our world, and God, we thank you that you are the great healer of people suffering from physical, mental, and spiritual ailments. We pray now that you would be present by your spirit to people who need your touch of healing, comfort, and peace because of the coronavirus. May they feel your power of healing through the care of medical professionals and the love of their neighbors. Father, we pray for those who are experiencing feelings of fear, anxiety, and isolation at this time, and for those who are receiving treatment or who are under quarantine. Would you give them your supernatural peace and a strong sense of your hand of protection? Protect the families and loved ones of those who are infected from exposure to the disease. Lord, we also lift to you those who are at risk and vulnerable to severe illness from the virus. Would you protect them from harm and be their comfort amidst the uncertainty? We ask for strength, grace, and protection for those who care for them. And Father, we do ask for great wisdom for those who are making decisions that affect the lives of so many, for those seeking to develop tests and vaccines, and for those who treat the ill. May they be guided in their decision-making by wisdom, truth, and empathy. Father, here at St. Matthew's, we thank you for those who have put their hands up to be willing to help those who are in isolation. We pray that you would enable us to serve our fellow church members and our neighbors, to offer them hope and help. Help us to look around and notice those on the fringes who are in need of love and care at this time. And we pray that you'd continue to grow and strengthen your church, even when we can't meet together physically. We pray specifically for our mission partners in various locations on the globe. Would you grant them protection and wisdom as they navigate these current circumstances? Keep them and their families healthy and enable them to care well for those in need with your love and hope. 
Father, today we lift up Sue Wyatt to you, who's having a knee revision tomorrow. Please guide the doctors, keep her safe, and grant them a successful procedure. From Mike Sherwin, we continue to pray for healing and a supernatural peace and comfort. Please particularly protect him and his family during this time. And would you continue to keep Hamish Thorpe in your loving care, protect him from harm, and grant him renewed health and hope. And please, Lord, would you sustain his family throughout all they're experiencing. Father, we thank you for all the great blessings we enjoy. We pray that you would direct our focus to thankfulness and gratitude for all that you've given us and done for us. We thank you that you hear us when we pray, and we ask that you would move mightily amidst our families, our communities, and the world at this time for your glory. Amen. Hi, everybody. Good to be with you. My name is Suzanne. I'm one of the women's ministers here at St. Matt's, and I am going to read the Bible for us today. So we've got two readings today. Our first reading is from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. My name is Reuben and this reading comes from Romans 12, 9 to 16. Your love must be real. Hate what is evil. Do only what is good. Love each other in a way that makes you feel close like brothers and sisters. And give each other more honour than you give yourself. As you serve the Lord, work hard and don't be lazy. Be excited about serving him. Be happy because of the hope you have. Be patient when you have troubles. Pray all the time. Share with God's people who need help. Look for people who need help and welcome you into their homes. Wish only for those who treat you badly. Ask God to bless them not curse them. When others are happy, you should be happy with them too. And when others are sad, you should be sad too. Live together in peace with each other. Don't be proud, but be willing to be friends with people who aren't important to others. Don't think of yourself as smarter than everyone else. Hi everyone, it's at Matt's. Great to be with you today for our first, what we're calling the new era of online streaming as we go into this COVID-19 uh, period of having to minister online through stream services. If you're not familiar with St. Matt's and you've just joined us, my name is Bruce Clark, I'm the Senior Minister, and I've got one very important message for us today, which is this, do not be afraid, God is with us. I heard a very interesting statistic on the news this morning. In our country today, with all of the incredible agriculture we have, we can currently feed each week 75 million people. Now that's a telling statistic when you understand the fact that there's only 25 million people in the country. And so we can feed at least three times as many people from Australia with the food that we produce. We are, in a global sense, a food hub. 
which is why we export so much food overseas. Now, when you take that reality and you think about the current panic buying, you go, what is happening? Well, what is happening is fear. What is happening is anxiety. We're currently experiencing a pandemic the world has not seen really since the Spanish flu of 1918. Now, there have been other pandemics uh, that have been in existence in the world over the last 100 years, but none has been one that has spread so quickly and so easily amongst all the different people groups and nations of the world since 100 years ago in 1918 with the Spanish flu. And every day we're sensing that the mood is changing, it is getting darker, uh, people are getting more fearful, more anxious, the borders are closing, uh, countries are shutting up shop, people are being sent home, uh, we're to practice social distancing. And the end result of all of the activities, the fear, the news, basically is um, many people are afraid. And I want to say to us today, as Christians, as people who know the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in him for the forgiveness of sins, we need not be afraid. Now, if you've got your Bibles there, I've got mine here. Uh, we're going to look at a wonderful psalm, Psalm 46. I'm speaking to you from my lounge room. Uh, I know it's a new experience. You're probably sitting in your lounge room. You might be listening on a device. But let's put that aside and let's think about what the Scriptures have to say to us and what God is going to say to us at this important time in our life together as Australians and as Christians here in the country and here at Manly. And Psalm 46 I've chosen because it's a wonderful psalm that gives us confidence when the world seems out of control that actually God is in control and we are not to be afraid. Let's have a look. Psalm 46. Let me read just verse 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Now there's three key things that we discover here from the Scriptures. Firstly, God is a refuge. I don't know how you view God, but I know what a refuge is. A refuge is a place that you can flee to when the storm approaches and is going to give you protection in the midst of that storm. Uh, and it could be you're on a boat out at sea and you see the storm approaching and you need to get into safe harbour. That's your refuge. Uh, it could be when the heavens are about to pour down, you see a house, it's yours, you can get inside before the heavens open. That is your refuge. It's the safe place in the midst of the storm. And Psalm 46 says here, God is our refuge. But not just that, he is our strength. In other words, he's not just a person that we can flee to. He is the living God who actually comes and strengthens us. And it goes on to say in verse 1, he is an ever-present help in trouble. And the great reminder of this psalm is our God is not distant. Even though he is over us, and he, even though he is the one who controls all things, he actually is saying here in the Psalms that he will be with us in the midst of the calamity, in the midst of the fear, in the midst of the anxiety. He is our ever-present help in times of trouble. And that's why he goes on to say in verse 2, Therefore, we will not fear. And if you don't remember anything from this message as you listen online, remember this. God is our refuge. God is our strength. He is with us. And so we need not fear. And let's see how the psalm unfolds on the back of that great, strong statement at the start. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountain fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. In other words, despite the fact that the world around might seem chaotic, the psalm is saying. The oceans might be surging and there might be this great sense of a storm and danger. And we all know that reality here in Manly as we live by the coast of when the, the elements and the seas are out of control. He says, well, that may be the case. But he goes on to say, don't be afraid. Why? Don't be fearful because there is a river. This is verse four, whose streams make glad that sea of God the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fail. God will help her at break of day. Now, friends, one of the most, if I can say, fascinating things I think in this uh, period has been um, that the humble toilet roll is this incredibly iconic symbol of fear. 
I can't believe I'm standing here with an unused pack as my illustration today. But that's the reality. Uh, because the toilet roll has become, become symbolic of the fear that has gripped the nation, such that you cannot find it in the supermarkets. I mean, they're restocking the shelves. We actually produce it in the country. There is no reason logically why people should be going for it and buying it in great numbers, but yet that's what they're doing. Uh, I've just come back from holidays, which is why I've been staying home and working uh, from the house and not from the office. Uh, that's why this is being shot here in the lounge room. And when I was away uh, overseas, I watched the video and it was stunning the way you saw this mother and daughter. She had a trolley. I think she was at Woolworths and it was a big trolley and they had loaded up packet upon packet of toilet rolls till it was overflowing. And then this poor other lady came in and she was a large lady and she was very determined to get her toilet paper. And she went up and took one of the rolls or packets out of the trolley and before you know it, this fight has taken place with pushing and shoving and pulling of hair. Uh, the security guards have to be called in. They call the police. And I just thought it's just such a terrible image of the anxiety that has gripped people that we're fighting over toilet paper. I think, what is going on? And yet the scriptures are saying, even when life seems out of control, we need to take hold of this fact. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells, God is within her, she will not fail. God will help her at the break of day. Now, the psalmist here is reflecting on the city of Jerusalem in the Old Testament. It's the city where God lived. Now, we know that the city of Jerusalem was really a symbol and a forerunner of the great city of God that is now up in heaven, where the Lord Jesus has gone to be after he was resurrected and ascended from the dead. And God is in his city, on the throne, with his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And they are ruling this world. And that's why the psalmist goes on to say this, nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. In other words, there may be chaos going on in the world. And that absolutely is the case today. I heard I'm recording this on Thursday. Scott Morrison has just closed the borders for our country, following the lead of many other countries in the world. The world is in chaos. But yet he says here, he lifts his voice and the earth melts. In other words, there is a voice that the whole world listens to and not just listens to, is in control. And it's the voice that causes the earth to melt. The Lord Almighty is within us, verse 7. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolation he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Now, what's he saying here? He's basically saying, look back. Don't look forward to the chaos that you can see around you. Actually look back and reflect on how God has worked in the past. And the imagery here for the psalmist in the Old Testament is of making wars to cease, of breaking the bow and shattering the spear. In other words, being in control of the chaos and the violence. And he's saying, look back. And friends, as Christians who live on the other side of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, we need to look back in our lives and remember all the ways that God has been at work in our life and in our church to not be afraid. And we can look back at the way he has protected us. We can look back at the way he has provided for us. We can look back at the way that he has worked in us and through us to get us to this point. And we need to do that because as we look forward and as we wake up every morning, and as you hear the news cycle and all the things that are going on with COVID-19, our centre needs to be in God. And our confidence and trust needs to be in him. And that's why when you come to this next verse, and it's a very famous verse, the psalmist says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And the psalmist is basically imploring us. He's calling us in the midst of fear and anxiety 
to look back and know the ways God has provided and protected us. And in the present, to stand on that knowledge that God is sovereignly in control, to not be afraid and to know this God, be still and know that I'm God. In other words, know that I'm in control. I'm the one who rules over all. And friends, that's exactly what we need to hear. And it's exactly what we need to be doing every day. And you can almost feel the calm as you come to these words. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And friends, one day, the day is coming when the Lord Jesus will be exalted. And he'll be lifted up and every knee will bow to him, the King of Kings. And in the meantime, yes, things like COVID-19 do strike the world. They do strike Australia. They do strike Manly. But God is still in control. And friends, we need to be still and trust him and know him. Because as the psalmist says at the very beginning of this story, uh, this beginning of this psalm, he is our refuge, he is our strength, and he is our ever-present help in times of trouble. I did love how one church wanted to express the calm with some humour. Uh, down at Helensburg, uh, it's one of the churches just on the very edge and verge of the Illawarra. I saw this on Facebook two weeks ago. Um, to have a sense of humour and invite people along to find out about Jesus, they changed their notice board. And it simply read like this. We'd love you to come and join us for church for two reasons. Reason one, Jesus is awesome. Come and find out. Second reason, we have lots of toilet paper. And what they were saying by that was, you know what, there's bigger things in life. We can help sort the toilet paper problem, but there's actually someone greater to know, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. Come and find out about him. And friends, we need to have that centering of our lives in God and in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to know him. So what's the application for us this day? as we think about knowing God, about being still, about not being afraid, about realising that God is with us. I've got one very simple word, it's connect. And we need to connect three different ways. Firstly, this psalm is calling us to be still and to connect with God. One of the realities of the modern media and modern technology is we have a news feed which is 24-7. And you see that particularly with the COVID-19 updates. I look at the Sydney Morning Herald and it is literally being updated every 10 minutes to every hour with news story upon news story upon news story. The Australian coverage starts at six in the morning, it goes through to 10 at night and then the international coverage kicks in at 10 at night and goes through to six in the morning and it just starts all again. And one of the impacts of that is you just get caught up in and overwhelmed by the information that is coming that just produces anxiety and fear for some of us. And the anxiety and fear is real. We're not just facing a virus, we're facing an economic downturn. There'll be people I know as you're listening, wondering will you have a job, not just in the next month, but in the next week. There'll be people worried about savings that are going down. There'll be people worried because you're in an age bracket where you are the most vulnerable. There'll be people worrying because you've got medical conditions. And we want to be praying for you because we know that your condition is vulnerable if you get the virus. And in this context, what we need to do is connect. And we need to connect firstly with God to actually put into practice what is being said to us here in verse 10, to be still and know that he is God. And I want to encourage you each morning, don't turn on the news feed. Open the Bible. Read it. Pray. Seek God. And have him speak to you and centre your life in him. Connect with the living God and know him as your refuge, your strength, your ever present help in times of struggle. And then you'll be able to repeat with the psalmist these words. Therefore, I will not fear, though the earth give way. But secondly, don't just connect with God, connect with each other. I think one of the challenges and realities that we're facing is we're going to be far more disconnected as communities and as a church because of the restrictions that have been placed for good reason in the community with social distancing. 
We can no longer meet online, if I can say, in the building at church. And I, for one, will miss it. I'm going to miss seeing together with everyone. I'm going to miss singing together with everyone. I'm going to miss praying together with everyone. I'm going to miss being able to have the word of God open for everyone together. We can't do that, but we can still connect. And what we need to do is work out ways that in this particular time we're in, where we can't meet in large gatherings, that we continue to connect in smaller gatherings. And you may be able to do that in some way in people's homes. It may be that it's an online connection, a virtual connection. It may be just by telephone calls. Uh, It may be by having uh, times together where you can maintain the social distancing that they're calling for. But whatever we do, connect with God, but connect with each other because we need each other and we will get through this together. And I want to say, if you're in a small group, this is one of the most important times for you to be together as a small group. And make sure as a group that you are looking out for each other and calling each other and praying with each other. It may just be on the phone, but connect together. Now, if you're not in a small group, I'd encourage you find some Christian friends in the congregation that you can connect with. And if you'd like some resources for what you can do together, Scott is very happy uh, to facilitate that. And just email Scott at scott at stmatsmanly.org.au. But you may be feeling, I'm alone. I haven't got many people to connect with. Well, then please do call us at the office, uh, email the office, and let us know that reality because we'd love to connect with you and work out ways that you can connect with others at church. And there are people there who are wanting to reach out from St. Matt's at this time to help people who are alone. And that is not what we want people to be. We want people to be connected this time. I want to read a beautiful email that Suzanne, one of our women's ministers, sent me today. It's a beautiful good news story. I'll read. At the beginning of the week, when things started looking even a little bit more uncertain than the week before, when toilet paper and sugar and minced meat was bought in even bigger quantities than the week before, I did not think this was possible. I got this text from a woman in our church. Hey, Suzanne, I'm keen to help with shopping for anyone who might not be able to do this for themselves. I could even place an order online if people don't have computers. I'll chat to my growth group too. We'll all help however we can. Listen what happened. When I got into the office on Tuesday, Suzanne sent a really short, simple message to all the members of our soul food ministry at St. Matt's asking something along these lines. Could you reply to this email if you're willing to shop for someone that needs it? Drop a meal off, go and visit, or probably more realistically, check in with a phone call, or even take someone to the shops to get some shopping done. I'm not quite sure what shape the help will take on as things progress and the situation we are facing develops, but at this stage, I just need a bit of a show of hands whether you would like to be involved, and then we can think more around it. Uh, They have called this group that they are trying to rally, the COVID care group. Suzanne told me that within minutes of her sending this email, she had 25 positive responses of people saying from St. Matt's, we want to be involved, we want to help, we want to care for people here at St. Matt's. And I tell you that it's a great story because days like these are opportunities to not be afraid and to step out and connect, knowing the strength and the power of God in our lives with others who need care and who need love and who need concern. The third thing I'd like to say is we don't just want to care for ourselves. We are to be a light in this community as God's people. We're trying to grow God's church through the gospel. And the gospel calls us into relationship with God And it calls us to take his love, his grace and his truth to the world. And at this time, what the world most needs is people who will care and connect with those in need. And friends, that's what we can be doing as a church at this time, connecting with the world around us and bringing his love to bear. And one of the things I've emailed the church with is a sheet that you can print off and on your printer. We're actually going to get some of these printed down at church so you can pick them up and collect if you'd like. And it's just a little card that simply says, hello, if you need a hand at this time, I might be able to help. My name is, fill your name in. I live locally at, fill your address in. My phone number is, put your number down. And you just tick, the person who gets this would tick the box I can help with, shopping, a friendly phone call, posting mail, other. Just call or text me and I'll do the best to help 
for you. It's free. And what we want church members to do, and can you imagine what would happen if we all did this? To place these cards in our neighbours' letterboxes, because I am sure there will be one or two people who are there who need help, who need connection, so that when they think, how will I get through, you will be the person who brings the love of God, the concern of God, the care of God to bear in their life. And it's such a simple thing that you might do some shopping, that you might just phone them up, that you might post them up, you might do something else. But all it takes is us having the strength and confidence that God brings because we know him and we know his son, the Lord Jesus, and we have his spirit living in us to not be afraid and not be anxious. And in the fellowship of connecting with others and the strength that brings, go and take this love out to the world and connect with those in need. So what are we to do in this time where the world is fearful and anxious? We are not to be afraid. Our God is a refuge. Our God is our strength. He is an ever-present help in times of trouble. And so we need to be still and know this God. We need to connect with him. And we need to make every effort to connect with others in the Christian family here at St. Matt's and stay together through the journey so that together as a church, we can reach out with the love and the mercy and the grace and the compassion that God has put in our hearts and share that with those in need. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are with us in this time of trouble. May you be our ever-present help, our refuge, our strength, so that we would not be afraid. May we be still and know that you are our God. Help us to connect with you, help us to connect with each other, and help us to take your love and your mercy and your compassion to this world that needs it, most of all right now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, Bruce, for that message. We do appreciate the reminder that God is with us so we can connect with him rather than remain in fear and also the encouragement to connect with one another and our community. We might need to close the borders to our country, but we don't need to close the borders of our hearts and they have been important truths for us to be reminded of today. We're planning on finish, finishing our service each Sunday with some good news stories from our people, but I've got just a couple of notices before that. The first is that instead of our regular hello card that you'd be used to if you've ever visited us in the past, we're now encouraging you to use the card that Bruce was talking about. Uh, we haven't got a name for it, let's call it the Corona card. Uh, it's a card that you can pass on to your neighbours uh, in their letterbox or under their front door, just to let them know that you're thinking of them and you're willing to be of assistance to them. I've previously emailed them out to you in a couple of formats, so you can print them off at home. We've also got a stash here at church if you want to collect one or two. Secondly, if you do need to get in touch with us, I want you to know that we are open for business whilst taking necessary precautions. You've just heard that we have a team of people who are willing to help those among us who are self-isolated or otherwise in a vulnerable position with things like shopping or meals. So please call the office and we'll try to get you sorted quickly. And if you have any prayer points, any praise points, any feedback, please send an email to mail at stmatsmanly.org.au. That's mail at stmatsmanly.org.au. Finally, our annual general meeting is planned to go ahead tomorrow evening in the church. Normally, we try to get lots of people to come along to this important meeting, and normally we fail dismally at that. But tomorrow night's meeting, we're asking only the people who have to be there come along. You might have already seen the financial statements that Bruce has sent out, and we'll get any necessary information out to you as promptly as possible. Now, just before we finish, I thought I might share one good news story with you. I was umming and ahhing about meeting with my growth group on Wednesday night because it had been such a hectic time and not all of our guys could make it. One was attending to his lovely wife who had just entered her self-isolation chamber having returned from abroad. Another was fighting uh, metaphorical fires in his business. But for those of us who could come, it was a rich time of fellowship as we met with washed hands, windows wide open, potato chips served with tongs, and a bit more space between us than usual. A personal highlight for me was hearing one of our guys share Psalm 91 with us. That'd be worth a read, Psalm 91. And he shared how he'd read that every morning this week, 
and how he'd read it with his teenage daughter that morning. And so we read it together and benefited from its assurance and comfort. So I was so glad that we continued to meet, albeit with extra precautions. And so I add my backing to Bruce's suggestion that we continue to meet if we're able to, in ways that are careful, creative and encouraging. Well, that's enough from me for now. Thanks so much for joining us today. I trust that our time together has been helpful for you. And one way or another, I really hope to see you soon. Until next Sunday, bye for now. <laughs>